What's poppin' with the population? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it's another episode of Do Whatever the Cape Road. It's me again, Drew. Just here to talk about stuff that's on my mind. Um, it's like day 160 or 150 plus of the genocide going on in Gaza, Dollar Sign, whatever have you, to the, happening to the Arab people caused by the uh, West and, you know, the Israeli establishment because um, it is a genocide, it's not a war. Um, we need to check our language because uh, you don't want the spin doctors to have you saying one thing and doing the other because, you know, you have the powers that be in the States, you know, co-opting language like ceasefire where they're like, oh, Kamal Harris is going against what Joe Biden so about when she just called for a pause, like if you listen to everything she said, it was a pause. The immense scale of suffering in Gaza, there must be an immediate ceasefire. Yeah. For at least the next six weeks. And in all honesty, a ceasefire is not needed. A end of the occupation is needed because there's st still occupying the people because Israel, as I've said numerous times, is, an, is illegal. They literally just stole it. I mean, the only reason why it's even that big of news as of like now in the sense of the occupation is because they did it late. Because if you think about the last time an occupation was going on, as far as like one that was like well known to the West was uh, South Africa. With the apartheid state there, with the with the Africans, which was <laughs> some weird thing that the colonizers there made up to call themselves, but even in South Africa now, even though like now that the apartheid is over, I think there's still like a uh, issue with the land distribution. Where, if I'm not mistaken, I think like ten percent of excuse me white South Africans own like 70% of the land, which is wild. I mean, it's also makes sense when you consider the history of South Africa in comparison to the apartheid state that is stolen Palestine, aka Israel, that um, Israel used to support South Africa and vice versa. Like they would, I think South Africa, if I'm not mistaken, would give Israel guns, or Israel would give South Africa guns, I forget. But they supported each other, like lock, stock, and barrel type. So we're living, you know, through a, you know, a genocide, which is wild. But it puts a lot of things into perspective when you think about history, where, like, I'm a big history buff with and I remember being in class, you would hear certain things like, wow, I can't believe this is happening or this happened before. That's insane. I mean, look where we're at now. You know, luckily we aren't doing that again. But the way in which we talk about history, we speak from a place that it won't happen again or isn't happening now. And that's like dishonest when you really think about it, because we can look at something like as far as the enslavement of Africans in this country, even though, if I'm not mistaken, only 5% of the slave trade happened in the States and a large majority of it happened in Europe um, in comparison, like numbers wise, I could be off, but obviously I'll fix it in post. But I say all that to say, like, we went from the enslavement, well, not we, the this corporation and who runs it went from the enslavement of African people to peonage, which was basically like sharecropping type deals and like having people under contract if they did something wrong, like you got to work for me to pay off a debt, like to prison, which as far as the 13th Amendment goes, um, slavery in this country is seen as illegal unless you locked up. And if you look at the majority of people in prison, it they look like me and or they are from a class of people who aren't financially well off and, and um, or coming from demographics that they don't have like a, a strong household or community behind them. And that usually is because, no, not usually, it's 
because of this system that we currently live in. Because what people tend to forget is that racism is a system like straight up being racist, like not liking somebody and being bigoted and chauvinistic or hegemonic in the way that you act. It's like something that you can like see, like you can have like a one off or one on um, one with somebody who doesn't like you for you and blah, blah, blah. But like that, that you can kind of pinpoint and like, okay, that person is like a bad person. They do in, in the way that they operate. But with systems, systems are ingrained and um, they are like the status quo. So for many, they don't notice that things are inherently racist or uh, xenophobic, homophobic, all of the phobics and uh, mystics. And I learned mystic meaning, mean, mystics means hate something, not like something, all of those things. But because the the system, you don't really notice it if you don't pay attention to it. And you just think that that's just how it's supposed to be. It's like, for instance, when you look at like something as, as basic as like HR work where like you can hear like ethnic names or black names and those get like thrown out. Like as far as anecdotally speaking, I remember my mother told me she used to work at HR like when I was a kid. And she was like, yeah, they would throw out names that sounded too ethnic. Whatever that's supposed to mean is wow. But yeah, I mean, I know for me personally, like I went for a security position like a few years ago when I used to have locks and the interview went well. And then the uh, lady asked me at the very end of the interview when I was walking out, uh, did you ever think about cutting your locks? Well, she said dreadlocks. First of all, dreadlock is a derogatory term. If I'm not mistaken, it was uh, coined by the British because they're saying like your hair's dreadful. Um, I'll fix it and post if I'm off, but I'm pretty sure, yeah. But she was like, "Will you cut your lock? Will you cut your locks?" And I'm like, "No. Like, what does my hair have to do with security?" But again, that's racist. Was she herself a racist, a bigot? I don't know. I don't know that woman. But systematically speaking, where she's coming from, she's working from the framework of a racist establishment because they believe whatever they believe as far as pre presentation, like, oh, you look too ethnic or whatever have you. So we are constantly um, being put into positions where we are trying to move forward and progress and think that, you know, we can do things for the better, but then when you really peel the layers back, you realize that things have changed, but change doesn't mean better. Different doesn't mean better. It just means that whatever the bull crap we were going through before may have adapted to what was going on now. And like, we're living through a lot of the things that we were seeing, we're not seeing a lot of things, or you're seeing if you watch documentaries, but a lot of things we were reading about in history class are happening now, like in just different ways. Like, again, like I spoke about with the coronavirus, like the Spanish flu. You speak about like a lot of the, um, a lot of the, uh, for instance, people who enlist in the military feeling left out when they come back home and how the VA doesn't really care about them and all of these other things that many, you know, people who, you know, military vets go through and they try to, you know, advocate for themselves, the ones that can, who aren't like completely screwed up with PTSD and living out on the streets, but the ones who are, who are like well-adjusted functioning within society, but like they try to, they got problems as well as the people that are living on the street who fought, who thought that they were fighting for this country. Um, but when they protest or when they say anything, they, they, uh, their grievances get swept to the side, but like you have those people protesting or whatever, like that's no different than like the bonus army from not mistaken. That's what they were called. It was like after world war one, a lot of the military guys felt like, Hey, I don't care about us. So just to make it short and sweet, um, a lot of 
vets got together and tried to march on Washington and then like were like sleeping outside or like they tried to like sleep outside of the White House or whatever have you. And like General Patton and a couple of other um high ranking officials um just disrespected them or like destroying encampments and kicking them out and shaming them for wanting to be treated like the heroes that you said that they were, right? So you have to realize that history repeats itself because everything is history. Like it's just linear, it's just going on and humans haven't changed that much for the better. They've just kind of adapted. Like there's obviously aspects and parts of human life that's different, but overall it's pretty much the same. And you look at like things repeating, like for instance, what's going on in Israel and Gaza, like the apartheid state, like Israel, like learned from the learned from South Africa and apartheid, and like and being able to other a whole people and demonize them and make them look like the bad guys, even though they were they didn't do anything to you and were there first but you make it look like they did something to you and also where you what you stole is is yours and then um you also act in such a way that is like genocidal which is like reminiscent of the holocaust like and you're just doing it again but which is weird because if you want to argue that uh, the creation of Israel is supposed to be a safe haven for people of the Jewish faith and people who are like ethnically Jewish or whatever have you, then, and say like, it's a never again kind of mentality and we want to be able to have a safe place for Jew people of the Jewish faith or what an ethnically Jewish people could be. And then you operate from a place of hate, it is pretty insane because you are just repeating what you claim you were getting away from. Not claim, but what you were getting away from. But then when you look up the creation of Israel from like the late 1800s with like the Belfour Declaration, the dude and the British dude talking about like, yeah, not Jew, Jewish, ethnically Jewish people, Jewish people, people of the Jewish faith need a, need a state. Yada, 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 you look up that and then you look up like early Zionists and what they were talking about and how they kind of aligned with like Nazis and, and that. Like, yeah, they were like, yeah, they doing, they're helping the, the cause in regards to the need for a Jewish state because clearly they y'all don't want us here. And then you see like the terroristic acts that Zionists went to, to, forced the hand of Britain who was uh, occupying um, Palestine after like the Ottoman Empire or, and um, saying like, yo, we need a place to be and Britain like, yeah, well, we know and we just got to figure this out with the Palestinians, like the attack on um, the King David Hotel, like one of the heads of the organization, the terrorist organization of Zionists that attacked the King David Hotel ended up becoming one of the first prime ministers of Israel. Imagine your leader literally being a terrorist. So, but you see that, like, that the history is just going on. It's not necessarily repeating itself more so than it is just people are just, people are humans, creatures of habit. So if you don't change things for the better, you just adapt things for the worst. So you look at like somebody like Benjamin Netanyahu, who like fought in the Yom Kippur War and all that. He's also a terrorist. And he's also like the furthest thing from like, if we were to go, even though race doesn't exist in humans, but if we were to go off like ethnic backgrounds as far as like his history, he's also like Polish in Spanish, and in like he, his dad, I think his dad and mom, but his dad is from like Warsaw, like 
Poland, like that was ruled by the Russians at the time. And his last name isn't even Netanyahu, it's Milikowski or something like that. And he went to school in Pennsylvania and lived in America. Like, he, he's changed his name numerous times because he's a liar and a murderer. But, you know, you just, just get away with what you get away with if they allow it. But the way in which we are um, seeing history... We we have to take ourselves out of this mindset that things are um, not different. I mean, things are uh, better. And so, like I said, in certain respects, certain things are. But we have to attack certain things that are going on within our society as humans to, for better, for change. Uh, uh, Sorry, I'm mixing up my words. We have to attack certain aspects of our society as far as the thought, the thought in, cer of, of, in certain aspects of our society for the better. Because if we keep allowing these kind of thoughts, thought processes, these kind of uh, uh, think tanks, so to speak, to exist, things like this will continue to happen. Because again, there's genocidal acts happening in the Congo. You have... Uh, the Port of Prince and Haiti, like they're going through it. Um, Sudan, uh, you have like all of these places that are going through these conflicts and repeatedly go through conflicts, and we look at them in a vacuum, and they're all interconnected, like because it all has to do with like capitalism, and it all has to do with. Just somebody wanting to get something over on somebody else, and it all has to do with hegemony, and it all they all tie into each other if you just pay attention. So you try to see like how can you as an individual be better while these things are going on, and the best thing you can do is figure out the best thing you can do is figure out how you can change the conversation, to change the thought for the better, not just change, but for the better. Like, what can you do? Uh, because as of right now, when you look at the way that the world is, like, well, the way that society is, like, we are allowing ourselves to just do what we've always done. And if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you always get. Because if you just look for change, a lot of things that change end up just staying the same. Again, you got to look for things to be better. And like, you got to look for that with even within yourself when you look at like how people try to uh, um, hide from who they are or not allow themselves to grow because they think the only way I can be somebody within this society is if I'm ex accepted by everybody but and and then a lot of people who say like no I don't I'm I'm alone I do my own thing I'm not it's like usually if you are talking like that you are doing that for attention usually like you are wanting people to follow you you are wanting people to be a part of your a part of your uh, think tank so to speak like but in actuality if you are really trying to be counterculture counter establishment counter um the status quo you would go out of your way to see how you can rearrange your thoughts first and for the better not just change but for the better and then move amicably after that like well, well move with a purpose as well because we have so many people now like uh what not identify as this or identify as that in regards to like their political leanings, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm liberal or I'm conservative or I'm right wing, left wing, I'm this, I'm that. It's like, you could just be a human. Like, let's just move and operate like, like humans and let's treat people like they should be treated and let's operate like, again, Roy Jones, 
Oh, Roy Jones. Roy Wood Jr. made a, that joke where he was just saying, like, you know, people have problems with trans people. And they don't seem to have a problem with, like, calling Superman Superman. Like, or Batman Batman. Like, but that's their alter ego. Or that's their, that's who they call themselves. And you call them that, too. So I was like, if you could call those people that and get into full-fledged arguments about, like, fictional characters, then why can't you just call somebody who they are. Like, why would you dead name a trans person? You get what I'm saying? It's the name Jack want to be called Jill. You can't do that. Meanwhile, half your favorite entertainers been performing under a fake name. <laughs> you ain't had no problems with that. I ain't finna call you Jill. Meanwhile, you, you, think, you, think, you think Ice Cube is his real name? <laughs> Really? Or maybe he just gave you a name he wanted to be called? Maybe? Just maybe. Hulk Hogan's real name is Terry. <laughs> Let that sink in while you refuse to call a trans person what they want to be called. The sweaty ass Hulkamania, Hulk fucking Hollywood Hogan is a n from Tampa named Terry. Same kind of thing, like understanding people's identity and, and understanding like things for the better for yourself at first. Because if you look at like from trans people to cis hetero people to everybody, like a lot of people aren't comfortable in their own skins initially. And then when they start to be comfortable in their own skins, they get pushed back. Uh, you had the young kid who I forget the child's name. They uh, um, uh, they took their own life because they got beat up in a bathroom, if I'm not mistaken, or something to that effect. Like the child went to the bathroom. They were a trans child that went to the bathroom. Kids at the school, if I'm not mistaken, put their hands on, on the child. Uh, kid ended up going home, you know, or whatever have you, and ended up ultimately take uh, ending their own life. And for what? For what though? In the sense of like, I'm not shaming that child for doing what they did, and those kids for doing what they did. They did it from a place of not understanding themselves. In the sense of like, you're so caught up in whatever you're being taught or who, whoever's telling you how to operate for you that you're not allowing other people to be themselves. Like you're so worried about somebody else's identity and them figuring themselves out that you think that because they want to be themselves that that is a attack on you. It's like that kid was just living their life and they ended up ending their life because again, Figuring out who you are, whether it be from a trans person to a cis person person, just anybody, is a journey. And honestly, like I said, with trans people, it's a it's a great represent. Figuring out who you are is a great rep their journey is a great representation of that idea that it is hard to know who you are, what you are in this world, and how you are to how can you operate for the better for you. And like, when you're looking at, again, Israel Palestine, when you're looking at a, a, a ethno state that was started by Zionists who were terrorists, but started by Zionists whose identity is based upon um, the idea that they were as far as Zionists, that they, they were persecuted, they were persecuted for their their faith. They need a place to be, and they need to be isolated from others who are who are trying to take something from them because of a paranoia that they have, rightfully so, from what happened in, during World War II. But then to play on that and make it where okay, this place to be is going to be somebody else's place. And the people that are trying to hurt us is everybody. 
and you're creating an identity that is dangerous to everybody because it doesn't make any sense to have put people in constant fear. And then people who aren't in a line with that, you treat them awfully. Like you, you, you tell these people who don't identify with that, that they're wrong for not choosing to act like you do. Like you have conscientious objective, uh, conscientious objectives, objectives. I don't know why I can't say that word. Right? Excuse me, conscientious objectives in in Israel who go to jail. Well, go to yeah. I think I don't think it's prison. I think they go to jail. Whatever they go to, so they go to jail or prison. Uh, for not. During the IDF, because if I'm not mistaken, being a part of the IDF is compulsory, is compulsory, uh, compulsory or whatever. Like you have to do your term because a lot of countries are like that outside of the U.S. where you got like mandatory uh, military stints. Um, there's people that go to prison or jail or whatever for not joining the military because they don't think that they should be doing well, they don't think that they should be in that military because they don't believe in the ethno state because of what the, what this ethno state is doing and how it's trying to tell us that we're the chosen people. We need a state. Everybody wants to hurt us. And so we got to kill everybody else. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Back with Sophia, she's preparing for another stint in jail. She'll keep being sent to prison until either she or the army relents. What do you think explains the disconnect between how you're seeing what's happening in Gaza, how much of the world is seeing what's happening in Gaza, and how most of the rest of Israeli society is seeing it? In Israel in general, there's a very, very strong uh, notion of dehumanization of the Palestinians. And while the rest of the world uh, sees uh, thousands of people getting killed and injured and displaced uh, in Gaza, the people in Israel, a lot of them just see the enemy. When you have such strong racism being told to you as a, the correct narrative from a very, very young age, it's really hard to break through that. But if you allow someone else to tell you who you are, they can get you to do anything. So understanding your identity as a person is very powerful when you really think about it because then you'll be able to walk firmly in this society and hear the chirping from every and anybody in regards to who and what you are how you operate but know like i know who i am and i know you can't you know break me and you have people constantly, like from the Joe Bidens of the world as far as the politicians to the Donald Trumps telling Jewish people that vote Democrat or whatever, that they hate their religion and that when they're talking about whatever they're talking about, they hate Israel. When again, Israel, so in Palestine, aka okay, Israel is an ethno state that is committing terrorist acts by doing heinous crimes like a genocide. Um, that, like, how can you tell somebody that? Who are you to tell somebody who they are? Hate Bibi Netanyahu. I actually think they hate Israel. Yes. I don't think they hate him. I think they hate Israel. And the Democrat Party hates Israel. Any Jewish person that votes for Democrats uh, hates their religion. They hate everything about Israel. And they should be ashamed of themselves because Israel will be destroyed. Right? Like... And it's been a history of that within just human society. Again, when you go back to Israel, when you go back to South Africa, when you go back to Germany, like Nazi Germany, like you had World War I that destroyed and destabilized Germany when they was like an empire getting money, whatever. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Adolf Hitler fought in World War I. You had him like use that moment, use that time with the sanctions that Germany was getting hit with from the U.S. to be like, yo, we need to blame someone for what's going on. And xenophobia has been a part of humanity since, like, societies have existed, it seems. So 
He was like, yo, let's blame these like German Jews or whatever that it's their fault. Like their identity, who they are is the reason for why we're going through what we're going through, which made absolutely no sense. But he was very charismatic and was a great speaker and was able to, te again, tell people what they, not what they want to hear, but tell people what he wants them to hear. And because those people didn't know who they were, they agreed to the bullshit crap he was spitting out of his mouth. Like there's, I'm from New York, so I've been to like the Holocaust Museum out there and heard some, and like, I, f I forgot it was one of the exhibits, if I'm not mistaken, where they were talking about like Jewish people saying like they've, like that they've been to, uh, it was like someone, it was quoting someone that said that they've been to like a Hitler speech and it, like if you, if you don't know who he is and you just listen, like he'll have you hating yourself. But again, that ties it to the point of knowing who you are. If you allow other people to dictate how you operate, you will do whatever they tell you to do. Like if you allow them to tell you, uh, no matter who vote blue, you will vote for a genocidal maniac Zionist who's a well-known Zionist. Joe Biden has been saying it forever. I make no bones about it. I get criticized for having said a long time ago, you need not be a Jew to be a Zionist. I'm a Zionist. Were there no Israel, there's not a Jew in the world to be safe. You will vote for Donald Trump because you think he's the better option. And he's also a Zionist. He also signed the Abraham Accords. He also recognizes Jerusalem as a capital, I think it's East Jerusalem, as a capital of Israel. He also gave <laughs> Israel guns. He also gave the Golem Heights. They're also going to call it the Trump Heights. He also told Jewish people that if they vote Democrat, they hate themselves. So, like, yeah, bro, like, don't let people tell you who you are. Like, the identity politics that we play, well, that try to get played in the media, don't really, I feel like, don't really address this point of, like, the coercion and the trying to force malleability. I feel like that's a word, but saying so is malleable and like they uh, acquiesce or whatever have you to like the powers that be or capitulate to the powers that be. We, I feel like they don't talk about that a lot because that's what they want you to do. They, mainstream media is like funded by the state. Like they, if you look at like a lot of these news outlets, like even CNN, one that one dude admitted it. Like, yo, we can't. As far as with Israel, we can't put certain stuff out unless it's okayed by Israel, like by the IDF. But like, they want you to listen to what they are saying and operate how they want you to operate because the narrative is the truth to them. So. You got to remember who you are, because who you are and what you are are two different things. Like, the what is, like, the things that they see on the outside, as far as, like, and it's like the, like, I'm a male. I'm somebody that identifies as a man, cis hetero black man, African and American. Um, but the who is personal. That's the identity that you walk with, right? So... Knowing that you you have to not allow yourself to be uh, bamboozled and and tricked into believing that certain things should be the way they are because that's just how they are. Like again, to tie in Israel, Palestine, stolen Palestine, aka Israel. Um, they recently just took the life of a twelve-year-old child. Israeli security forces have shot dead a 12-year-old Palestinian boy whom they accused of being a terrorist. Rami Halhuli was one of six Palestinians shot dead by forces in occupied East Jerusalem and the West Bank yesterday. The shooting happened at the Shuafat refugee camp here in occupied East Jerusalem, which is home to about 16,000 people. The boy was playing with a firework with friends in front of the family home. Israel's national security minister hailed the officer who shot him as a hero and a warrior. He was playing with fireworks with his friends and was sniped in the chest. 
I believe it was a chess. And you had like a defense minister, whatever Ben Gavir is, say like they shouldn't be investigating the officer for shooting the soldier for shooting him. He should be rewarded because he's tw he was like he's twelve, but he's a terror. Like, what are you saying? How are you telling these Arab people that are living in Palestine and have been there way before you that they're terrorists? What is a terrorist? Right? Think about that aspect of it all as well. Because do you consider some uh, occupied people terrorists? Like, what happened on October 7th with the loss of life as far as civilians is terrible. What's happened before that to the Arab people that live in Palestine is terrible. But to act as though an occupied people shouldn't fight back against the occupier is insane. No? Like, what happened on October 7th didn't happen in a vacuum. The kibbutz that were attacked, all these things that were attacked, didn't happen in a vacuum. The lies that are being said about what happened on October 7th as far as like the, the, the um, sexual assaults that haven't been proven, none of the things that they've said have been proven so far, like the talk of a lot of, I mean, uh, the, 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 the talk that's being had about like how the IDF is took a, uh, taking a lot of lives of, uh, well, took a lot of lives that day in regards to like civilians as well. Like obviously Hamas killed, took the lives of, of civilians, but I, the IDF did as well. Said in the atrocious uh, uh, Hamas attack on our people on October 7th, we had the number at 1,400 casualties, and now we've revised that down to 1,200 because we understood that we had overestimated. We, we made a mistake. There were actually bodies that were so badly burnt, we thought they were ours. In the end, apparently, they were uh, Hamas terrorists. There's a lot of evidence out there that's been produced by the Israelis, which is either, either contradictory or potentially self harming. If people were saying, oh, actually, we, we went through the different bodies and we realized some of the burned bodies were actually Palestinians and they weren't, uh, they weren't our civilians. That begs the question, why were they burned and who burned them? How were they mutilated and who mutilated them? A proper forensic investigation would have to, have to clarify who killed them and, and how they were killed. And they did that by indiscriminately shooting like helicopter stuff and tank rounds or whatever have you, like charred bodies and whatnot. But do you call that a terrorist attack or do you call that a resistance group fighting against an occupying power? That still doesn't mean that it's justified to take the lives of civilians. That's never justified no matter what. But it does put things into perspective when you realize that they are an occupied people fighting against a tyrannical regime so there will be collateral damage in the form of civilian life where who's to blame is the occupier and who's at fault as far as like the literal loss of life is the occupied because they did they did the act but are they terrorists or are they a group that is fighting against an occupied I mean, a group that's fighting against an occupier. You know what I'm saying? It's just like when you look at uh, just pretty much any time the states call anybody terrorists. Like, are they though? Like, I personally look at a terrorist as somebody who's doing something from a from a power standpoint. Like, just like being, just like racism, like being a racist. Like, you you have to have control like you have to have a control of somebody being able to get a job or something like that and like some kind of some form of power to truly be a racist you be bigoted like i can be bigoted i can be pre i can be at uh, prejudice but being racist i don't have any power in the sense of i can't stop any group of people from getting a job or stuff like that you get what i'm saying 
That doesn't mean I can't be bigoted or hateful or what whatnot. So I say all that to say like you create not you, but <laughs> but like the West and other like hegemonic like regimes or whatever have you, like they create the resistance. You look at the Taliban, literally was created by the US to fight against Russia. And then you look at like what Osama was saying when he was young about like Palestine and a lot of the a lot of the terrorists were saying about like the occup the occupation of like Palestine and stuff going on with like uh the Desert Storm, just a lot of the other things that were going on in like African and, and Asian countries within within the region as far as like the Middle East. Um you when you listen to those people talk, you like you may not agree necessarily with their actions as far as like again, loss of life as far as civilians, or just loss of life, period, but you change the language and you don't let them be identified as terrorists, because I look at a terrorist as somebody from coming from a standpoint of having the power to do things. Like they they control the situation. They can control the environment. Like if you look up the reconstruction era, the uh way in which so many black towns were burnt down and destroyed from like the this, this small area like Black Wall Street, Greenwood or whatever have you, um, Rosewood, like Never Sick, New York, which is a real place that got sunk. Um, the, the town in Georgia that got flooded, like just a couple of places in North Carolina, South Carolina, like all of these places, those were terrorist attacks by the occupying power, which is, which were white people, but they have the power to go in there and be like, oh, they did this and did that and burnt stuff down and killed people. Right? That's terrorists because that's the occupant. They have the overall control. You may have a town here, but overall, I can come and take this if I want to. That's what I look at as, as a terrorist. A lot of the things that the states will say, uh, a lot of the groups that the states will say are terrorists, you can really see them as, if you look at it from a grander scale and look at the history of why these things are the way they are, you can see them as resistance groups. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to agree with the actions that they take to resist. But if you look at it, pragmatically speaking, you'd be like, oh, these are resistance groups against X, Y, and Z. Why they're doing what they're doing is because of X, Y, and Z. You get what I'm saying? That is not to say that there aren't terrorists. There, there are terrorists. There are terrorist groups. But you got to better identify those and not let somebody tell you what something is. Because again, if you don't have control of your identity, you will allow someone to tell you who somebody else's identity is and allow them to tell you how you should be interacting with someone else. And that's not fair to Nobody, because you will misrepresent them, you misrepresent yourself, and you will be caught up in a cycle of stupidity. And stupidity is way worse than evil, because evil you can easily identify. Stupidity is it can be uh, interwoven into every aspect of your life and can get you going from left to right, trying to figure out like, how do we get here? This is, this is what the, this is dumb. And like, who do I, what do I do? Like it, it won't make any sense, right? So don't let someone tell you to not have your do-rag with your cape roll. All right, peace.